I don't really listen so much about uh, the social media because most of the people who speak, they don't know about football. That's just the fact. And uh, the little ones who speak that I listen to, I still try to look about, look around the situation. I think the whole thing is bounced back to the coach because if a coach, if you put a player on the standby list, it means you are aware and you know what this player is going to do for you. And when the opportunity comes for the players to the player to be there, it's supposed to be the player from the standby list to go there. I think he listened so much about social media and all the whole things. That means you don't you, the decision you took was not really uh, you don't you you are not sure of the decision you're taking because it doesn't happen anywhere that you have a player on the standby list, the same position of player that is injured, and then you don't call the player to come. And so. I think there was too much influence on him rather to take someone else or something and all that, but I really don't care about it. After that, I didn't speak to anyone and I just said, I just said, this is, let's, let me just take this, that it didn't happen. So I just allow it to, I just allow it to slide. Uh, when I was injured, I, I just felt that uh, of course, obviously, it's, it's finished for me in the tournament, but I was thinking how will the team cope because, not because of I'm leaving and they cannot meet up, but in this kind of situation and the very high, high intensive game, anyone who is coming in is, is going to take him time for him to really adapt to that situation. And if he was on the first half, it would be better. The person will play, get his confidence, and then try to fit up in the second half. But it happened in the second half, and there was a little time for the team to adapt. And we already had a team. We already understood ourselves. We, 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 we managed the game in the first half. You could see that it was a goalless draw, and we managed the game, and everything was perfect. So, but at this point, uh, when I went out, I was just thinking on what is going to happen. And when I was going to the hospital for scan, when I just got to the hospital, I just saw 1-0. I said, oh God, before I know another one again, I said, and then I said, it's finished. But it was a fantastic tournament and you could see that we had a team. Even in as much as we don't have the best team as at that point, time, point in time, now even the team we have in Super Eagles now is even much talented than the team we have as at the World Cup then. But we had the first 11 that we understood ourselves. And we were able to play and know how to manage each other. Stephen Keshe. Not because we won the AFCON, but he's a coach that I have seen, not like a coach, also like a father and a mentor. Somebody who will give you that boost that you don't even think you have, but when he gives you the boost, you will know that you have it in you. i give you an example. When we got an issue about Efe Ambrose, he got a uh, suspension. Keshi was doesn't have an option on how to play the game. He called me to his room and he said to me, Onazi, you know I believe in you so much and I know you have so much quality to give to this team, irrespective of any position. Today I'm giving you a responsibility, I want you to take it. You are young, but I know you can be able to take the responsibility. I want you to go and play the right full back position. You could remember the game. Yeah. I was shocked with his statement. But with what he has said, he gave me extra boost that I could be able to do this. And we played the game and it went out well. So this is what I'm talking about, is somebody who can give you a mantle and tell you that you can do it. He will support you in every area that you want. And so this is a kind of coach. In football, any player who gets the backing of a coach and support, there's no how, even if you don't know how to play, you will know how to play in the next couple of games. Because he will encourage you, you do bad, he will keep you, he encourage you, you do until when you get it right. That's what a football player needs. I think it's a good start for him. Uh, he started with a very good uh, tempo and he's taking the bars very high. And what I'm praying is that he maintains that same level 
Uh, he's a very good coach, experienced coach, and he wants to make really good changes. From what I heard, I heard he's a very disciplined coach and all that. I've not seen it. And uh, if uh, opportunity comes for me to work under him, why not? I will do that uh, gladly because this is my country. Whenever they call me, I will always answer. And I just pray that everything that he's doing, we just maintain that same level. I just I also I will advise that he should also keep in that discipline and that uh, principle that he has in the team. The team has done well. Uh, of course, if they can score those teams, even 20, I will advise that you should score them 20 because Football now, the only way you can re be respected is only when you beat a team like this so much. You could see that when we had the qualifiers for the Afri uh, World Cup qualifiers, we were almost, we almost out when we played uh, these guys, uh, almost 4-4. And uh, other, yes, another team too as well. So if you, these are teams that you, 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 they don't even mention in the football world. But now it's difficult for you to play with such kind of a team. So if Nigeria play, if they finish the score and you hear that uh, we won 2-1, you will say, ah, we are playing this, come on this country and we are playing 2-1. But when it was like 10, some people were calling me, ah, your brothers are beating some people 10. What, are they angry or what? I said, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. Because when we play 2-1, you, you same you that will call me and say, come on this country and you people are winning 2-1. You understand? So for me, it's very, very important. And you, you, you win with respect. For you being a coach, uh, to coach the national team or anywhere you want to coach, is for you to have a structure and have a plan and stick to your plan. The most important thing is to be sensitive, to know when and how to go with your players and know who to use at the right time and all that. I used to say it and I will still say it because I also want to be a coach because I have a lot of knowledge that I need to uh, give to the younger ones. When we have this player, I will use this player as an example, Paul Onacho, he's a very tall striker. If you watch him in his club side, he scores a lot of goals, but when it comes to the national team, it's always somehow, I think personally, that the kind of player he is, is a player that is very tall and very good on the air. When you're playing a striker like Paul Onacho, you need to play wingers who cross the ball very well for him to use his uh, uh, opportunities to score goals. But when you play Paul Onacho and you play wingers, who likes to dribble and always want to shoot, then you make the striker look useless. So these are the kind of attributes and the characteristics coaches need to look at. Doesn't matter local coach or foreign coach, who it is. So you need to understand your players and who and who to play with these players to make them bring out that quality that they have. For me, this is the most important thing for me. And this is what I want to do if and become a coach one day. For sure, 100%. Uh, I don't know if I go to the national team today, the coach will say to me, okay, well, as you start 100%. But for sure, I think as far as it's football and what I know, uh, there's no way I can go, I cannot start and play football right now as it is because I'm 100% fit, I have no issues whatsoever and uh, I'm training good and uh, if the opportunity comes, I'm there. For sure, 100% because <laughs> I've been one of the opportune players to be able to win the AFCON for Nigeria. We, had, we have only three, right? Am I right? We have only three African Cup and I'm one of them who has won it. And there's a whole lot of millions of players who have passed through the national team and never achieved this. Even some great players that we have in Nigeria, they didn't achieve this. I've been to the World Cup twice and I've played a lot of games with a lot of great players. So for me, this is a lot of achievement for me. I know, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm going to make the next World Cup that is coming. But of course, there's still opportunity to play AFCON again. And, uh, if the opportunity comes for me, I, I will take it with my two hands.